Welcome back to Transit News. During the month of February, we had many new openings and work that has gone underway in the city of New York. So, let's get straight into the video and talk about the 14th Street passageway closure. As some of you may know, the MTA has been hard at work making the subway more accessible for those with disabilities. Two of the stations the MTA plans to improve accessibility at are 14th Street on both 6th and 7th Avenue. Due to this work, the MTA has closed the passageway that connected the two stations. They plan for the passageway to reopen in December of this year, and when it does and the accessibility improvements are complete, passengers will be greeted with newly installed elevators, refurbished platforms and mezzanines, and new wall tiles. I'm glad that with some of these accessibility projects the MTA is undertaking, they are not only installing new elevators but also renovating the stations. I hope to see the same thing done at Woodhaven Boulevard on the J Line in Queens and Westchester Square on the 6th Line in the Bronx. Last month, the MTA installed new decals at the Marcy Avenue Station on the J and M Lines and West 4th Street Station on the A, C and E Lines. These decals were placed at the accessible boarding area at the station and are intended to notify passengers with disabilities where their boarding area is on the platform. I like the intentions the MTA had when installing the strips, however I feel like the overhead signs near the accessible boarding areas are more effective. They are less prone to weather events and over time will appear more visible to passengers as they aren't on the platform collecting dirt every time a passenger steps on it. We all know about the MTA's plans to install CBTC on the eastern part of Queens Boulevard, between Kew Gardens and Jamaica 179th Street. It's almost like the second phase of Queens Boulevard CBTC. The system to the west of Queens Boulevard is mostly complete, and to maximize the effectiveness of the system, they are expanding it. Unfortunately, this means service changes for the lines running along Queens Boulevard. Starting March 17th, there will be a number of service cuts to accommodate CBTC installation. The E train will be running local earlier during the night, the Brooklyn bound F train will run local during late nights, and the R train will be cut back to Queens Plaza starting at 9.30pm. While this will unfortunately make the painfully long F line even longer and will cause even more headaches for those living on Queens Boulevard, it is nice to finally see the MTA getting to work on this CBTC project. Earlier in the year, the MTA opened multiple customer service centers in the system. These sensors are staffed by station agents who now have a larger role as part of a historic agreement between the MTA and Transit Workers Union late last year. At these customer service centers, station agents will assist customers with switching to Omni, applying for the reduced fare program, and wayfinding. The MTA plans for there to be customer service centers in 15 stations by the end of the year. Honestly, I like this redesign for the station agent position. Not only will they come out of their booth at the entrances of the stations to make sure everything is fine, but they'll also be more useful for passengers who need help navigating the system. Also, I like the design of these customer service sensors much more than the plain white and blue booths we see across the system today. Now, some of you may know about the LIRR's new schedule, which took effect late last month. This schedule was put in place to coincide with the opening of the new Grand Central Madison Station. Unfortunately, while the MTA toted the new schedule to add a 40% service increase, the new schedules left a lot to be desired for some passengers. Some passengers who used to have direct trips from Penn Station and Atlantic Terminal to their destinations now have to transfer at Jamaica. Now, this wouldn't be too much of an issue if there weren't such short time frames for connecting trains. LIRR Interim President and Metro North President Kathy Rinaldi in an interview said, What we've tried to do is accommodate as many passengers as possible. 
we're providing 41% more service across the board than we were before with multiple transfer opportunities, a lot more frequency, a lot more flexibility in terms of how our customers travel around the region, regional connectivity here at Grand Central to Metro North. So it's just different, and I think people will accustom themselves to these differences. We'll find the trips that work for them. If you have any thoughts about what was talked about in this video, tell me in the comment section below. What do you think about the new LIRR schedules? How do you feel about the MTA's accessibility improvements? Anyway, if you enjoyed the video and you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe, and consider supporting me via channel memberships or super thanks. Special thanks to Stuart Guberman for supporting me at the 2 Broadway tier and the Bronx Express Gaming for supporting me at the Train Operator tier.